Hi, and welcome to this week's Food for Thought. Now, last week, I had a wish for you. Now, this week, I have a challenge. I think it's safe to say, everyone loves bubbles. I remember as a child getting those little plastic bottles of soapy water with the little wand that you would blow through to make bubbles or wave through the air. I remember after I used it all up, I tried a few times to recreate the concoction, but I assumed that I could never get the soap to water ratio just right. However, with a little research, I found that it was a bit more complicated than just water and soap. Apparently, hard water with its metal ions make it more difficult for bubble formation. Who knew? Bubble masters add glycerin to their mixture to prolong the life of the bubble by forming weaker hydrogen bonds with water, which slows down the evaporation. Now, I found out so that's a lot more to bubble science, but that's not really where we're going today. <clears throat> As I said at the beginning, I think it's safe to say that everyone loves bubbles. However, not all bubbles are good. I'm referring to the bubbles we seek out and immerse ourselves in every day. From sports to politics, we gravitate to information and commentary that we agree with and that supports our preconceived ideals and beliefs. From Fox News to MSNBC, from Alex Jones to Tony Michaels, we seek to ensure that our confirmation bias stays intact. There's an old joke about people who pursue a PhD by specializing in one area. They learn more and more about less and less until they know everything about nothing. By sheltering ourselves in our comfy bubbles, we learn more about what we already know or what we believe, but little else. It may be tempting to file this under lifelong learning, but it really is lifelong isolation. Adam Grant, best-selling author of Think Again, Originals, as well as several other highly regarded books, advises us to do just the opposite. He recommends that we seek out diverse perspectives intentionally and keep an open mind while doing it. Writing about this approach in Inc., Nick Hobson summarizes Adam's advice by saying, there are things we know we know, things we know we don't know, and crucially, things we don't know we don't know. This last category is the most dangerous for personal and intellectual growth because it consists of gaps in our knowledge and understanding that we are entirely unaware of. Engaging with dissenting voices and perspectives helps to illustrate these blind spots, revealing areas where we may be ignorant or misinformed. Mr. Hobson concludes by saying, engaging with those who disagree with us, we confront our biases, uncover our blind spots, and foster intellectual humility. This process not only broadens our understanding, but also prepares us to navigate an increasingly complex and diverse world. Embrace the discomfort of disagreement. It's the key to continuous growth and learning. And to quote Dr. Ian McGilchrist, psychiatrist and author of The Master and His Embassy, a pioneering exploration of the differences between the brain's right and left hemisphere, he said, it's not necessary to solve problems, only to understand them. And I'll let you dwell on that until we talk again next week.
If you heard anything that you'd like to discuss or ask, if you want anything from me uh, regarding business growth, content creation, et cetera, I'd love to talk. Just send me an email at rich at speakingofsuccess.us. And with any luck, I'll see everybody next week. Bye.